Good evening. Your call, please. Can you hear me? Does this work? I can hear and see you just fine, madam. Uh, how can I help you tonight? I've been trying to reach Murray Hill Fauna for the last three quarters of an hour, but no one ever answers it. I don't see how it could be busy for that long. Will you try to reach it for me, please? Hmm. Um, let me have a look. Looks to me as if all the telephone lines are currently down. I suppose it must be because of the storm we had yesterday. I am very sorry for the inconvenience, madam, but in any case, not a lot of people use telephone lines anymore, I suppose. No one else called to notify us anyways. There are so many other ways to communicate nowadays. It's unacceptable. My husband pays a lot of money for our phones to always work perfectly. I depend on it, you see. I have a nervous condition. I can't leave the house. Everything outside just unnerves me so terribly. What am I supposed to do now? I am really sorry, madam. I'll have someone look into it right away. It's my husband's office I'm trying to reach. He's working late tonight and I'm all alone in the house. And I've been feeling so nervous all day. All this trouble with the phone all the time. I can't stand this incompetence. This is the fourth time already this month. It's making me sick. The Mary Hill 4, you say? What I can do for you, madam, is I can try to reach their video call number. Um, hold a second, please. Logging into the Mary Hill 4 video call system. Hello, someone there? Hello? <sighs> Is this thing working now, or ain't it? Hello? Oh, hello. I almost thought you wouldn't show. Can you hear me? I never know if they can hear me on these things. Ugh, makes me nervous as hell. I can hear you fine, sir. Hello, who is this? Who are you? Hello? I miss the good old ominous phone calls. Made you feel like the guys in the black and white movies. All this electronic stuff ain't got that glamour. Really makes the whole business less cool if you ask me. I don't know, boss. I think there's something real intimate about this. It gives me the feeling like I'm really in the, the same room with you. You know how much I value a person-to-person -person interaction. Anyways, enough talk. You'll be glad to know that we have finally heard from our client. He says the coast is clear for tonight. Not good, sir. Uh, where are you now? At home, like everyone else. What? I told you to get in your way an hour ago. What's keeping you? Uh, well, uh, uh, you know how they said not to go out unless it's absolutely necessary. I don't know, boss, I just felt a bit uncomfortable, I guess, putting people's lives at risk by going out when I don't have a reason to. I don't want to be irresponsible, and it's up to everyone to do their parts to flatten the curve so we can all return back to normality. So I thought, you know, I'd better be sensible and wait for your call, and, and then I'd start heading out but with my mask on, of course. You wear a mask on normal jobs, too. How can a fellow like you be so... Okay, whatever, just, I don't know. Go and get in your way now. You know the address. There should be only one light visible from the street, and that's her place. You get in via the window, and then at 11 o'clock, the subway train crosses the bridge. It makes a noise in case a window is open and she should scream. Okay, sir. Window, subway. Got it. Make it quick, as little blood as possible. Our clients do not wish to make her suffer long. It's a knife, okay, sir? 
Yes, yes, a knife, a pistol, whatever you want, as long as you make it quick and clean. After the incident last time, we really need to clean up our reputation if we want clients to keep coming in. Our clients tonight are paying good money to get rid of that lady, so don't fuck it up, all right? All right. Keep in mind that we don't want them to go to any of our rivals should they require our special services again. Got it? Sure, boss. Our reputation is important. I won't disappoint you, you can be sure of that. And remember, remove the rings and bracelets and the jewelry in the bureau drawer. Our clients wish it to look like a robbery. That's important. You know me. There'll be no slip-ups, sir. Well, not this time, at least. The last time was really just I'm fortunate. I mean, a dog. Who wants to have a dog hard that way? You know I don't support cruelty against animals under any circle. Yeah, I get it. That was a bit extreme. Okay, now, let me just check her address again. It's, uh... Your call, please? Oh, awful. Did... Did you hear that as well? How unspeakably... I'm sorry, madam, but I didn't hear anything. What video call number were you connected to? What? Well, it was supposed to be Mora Hill 4, but I don't think it was. Something must have gone wrong. You must have misdirected me. I was cut into the wrong call, and... I've just heard the most terrible thing. A, a murder. I, I beg your pardon, madam. I don't quite... Uh... I know it was the wrong call and I had no business listening, but these two men, they were cold-blooded fiends and they were going to murder somebody, some poor innocent woman who was all alone in a house near a bridge. We've, we've got to stop them. We've got to. Listen, this was the wrong call and you connected it. So you have to fix it too. We've got to find out who they are immediately. But madam, I, I don't... I... Oh, why must you be so unbearably stupid? I'll repeat it slowly for you so you can understand. Look. I told you to try Murray Hill 4 for me. You connected it, but your finger must have slipped and you connected me to someone else. And I could not see them. They were just two black screens, but I could hear them clearly. I need you to call that number again. We must stop them at any cost. I... All right, certainly, madam. I'll call them again. I am sorry. Mary Hill 4 seems to be busy at the moment. No, why won't you understand? Not Murray Hill 4. I want to trace that call you made before. It's my civic duty. It's your civic duty to trace that call and to apprehend those dangerous killers. And if you won't, I'll make sure you'll be fired for... For a night of assistance, yes, I will. Listen, madam, since apparently you think that I'm unfit to help you, why don't I connect you with the chief operator? I'm sure you'll find her much more efficient than me. Yes, please do that. Hello? Hello, am I speaking to the chief operator? Hello, oh, boss? You there? What now? Are you there already? It's still too early. Just wait in a side alley for a little while, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, listen, boss. Wasn't this lady supposed to be rich or something? 
This place doesn't look rich at all. It's just normal, you know, a normal apartment. Huh. Let me ask you one question. Do we get paid to think? Uh, I don't understand. Clearly, you don't. I cannot believe that I still work with you after all this. Just listen, just check the address again. And if it aligns with where you are now, find some place where no one sees you and wait until 11 and then silence her. Don't call me because of something like this. What if someone hears us? I'm sorry, boss. I didn't mean to agitate you. I just want to finish the job and get it over with. I just, I don't like being outside right now. Oh, you just wait. I'm going to call the authorities and then, then. I saw three people without a mask on them way over here. You know how I don't like germs. They're going to arrest you and you are going to pay for everything you've done or are going to do or just you wait, you'll pay. Hi. Hi. This is the chief operator. How may I help you? What? What kind of joke is this? What? Is this a joke? Like, I don't understand what you mean, sorry. <laughs> your operator, one of your operators, I don't know his name. Well, I don't know if he's playing some kind of crude trick on me or if all of this is really happening. Chief operator, I am very distraught. I am a sick woman, a very sick woman. And there is something terrible happening. You simply must help me. Do I know you? Your face looks familiar. Um, I like look familiar to a lot of people. Um, I kind of, you know, I like have that kind of face, but whatever. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Like, what can I do to help you? Oh, thank you. Thank you for understanding. I just know you can help me trace this video call. I don't know exactly where it came from or who was making it, but it is absolutely necessary for me to find out who made it. Right. Mm-hmm. So you want me to trace a call, but you neither know where it came from nor who was making it. Am I understanding you correctly? Yes. Yes. Because it was about a murder, you understand? A terrible, cold-blooded murder of a poor innocent woman, tonight at 11 o'clock. Of course, they wouldn't want us to find out who they are, but we must, we must. They are already at her place. She's in grave danger, Chief Operator. Oh my God, a murder. I see, madam, okay. Can you do it? Can you trace it for me? Can you track them down? Right, so um, that like really depends, madam. Depends? Depends on what? Well, it depends on whether the call is still going on. If it's a, a live call, we can still trace it on the equipment we have here. If it has been disconnected, we need to ask for like, um, like, a, like a specialist person to help us and that could take a while. You know, given the time of night and, I'll be, <laughs> the current situation. <laughs> but, but, well, it is possible that they have stopped talking by now, but maybe they'll make another call. Well, um, okay. In that case, I can like try tracing it. What is your name, madam? Mrs. Stevenson, Mrs. Albert Stevenson. Listen. That's so pretty. And your video call number? Plaza four. But if you go on wasting any more time, we- And what exactly is your reason for wanting this call traced, madam? Well, for heaven's sake, isn't it obvious? I overhear two people, two killers, 
and they're planning to murder this woman. It's a matter for the authorities. Right. Mm -hmm. I see. So, like, have you contacted the, the, the police, madam? No. How could I? During a time like this? With all the terrible things that you hear on the news. Right. So am I correct in assuming that you're making this check into a private call purely as, like, a private individual? Yes! Well, madam, Mrs. Um, Stevenson, I seriously doubt whether we can make this check for you at this time. Just on your, like, you know, say-so as a private individual. Like, we'd have to have something more, um, official. For heaven's sake! You mean to tell me I can't report a murder without getting tied up in all this red tape? What? That's perfectly idiotic! They are out there, right now, making calls. It can't be that hard to track them down. Oh my god, you're like so rude. So I strongly suggest you call the police, madam. So you... <laughs> all right! Connect me with the police immediately. Totally contacting the police department, madam. Precinct 43, Duffy speaking. Police department, this is Mrs. Stevenson. Mrs. Albert Stevenson of 53 North Sutton Place. I'm calling to report a murder. Oh. I mean, the murder hasn't been committed yet. I just overheard plans for it over some video calls. Over a wrong connection that the operator made. I've been trying to make them trace down the call, but everybody is so stupid. <laughs> and I'm not good with technology at all. And I guess in the end, the police are the only ones who could really do anything. Well, I suppose so. I suppose we can. I heard their plans very distinctly. Two people were talking and they were going to murder some woman at 11 p.m. tonight. A woman living in a house near a bridge. Uh-huh. And then they were talking about clients. People who are paying to have this poor woman murdered. They were going to take her rings and bracelets and use a knife. Well, it unnerved me dreadfully. And I'm not well. I see. Okay. Um, when was all of this? About five minutes ago. And then one before that. I don't know how long ago that was. Then you can do something. You do understand. And what is your name, ma'am? Mrs. Stevenson. Mrs. Albert Stevenson. I already told you. And your address? 53 North Sutton Place. That's near a bridge. The Queensboro Bridge, you know. Well, we'll make sure to look into it, Mrs. Stevenson. We'll see if we can check it with the chief operator. But the chief operator said they couldn't check the video call if the parties had stopped talking. Oh, yes? They've already stopped talking, then. How am I supposed to know? Yes, I suppose they have. Well, that settles that then. Listen, we'll take care of it, lady. Don't worry. We got this now, so you can go back to, well, whatever it was you were doing before. It doesn't help anyone if you worry too much about things. Just, I don't know, take a pill, drink a glass of wine, do a face mask, and go to sleep, all right? I'd say the whole thing calls for research. A complete and thorough search of the whole city. I know I'd feel a whole lot better if you sent around a car to this neighborhood at once. What makes you think the murder is going to be committed in your neighborhood? Uh, I don't know. The coincidence is so horrible. The, the bridge. And there's a train that goes by here at 11 o'clock. <laughs> First of all, do you happen to know how many bridges there are in the city of New York alone? Not to mention Brooklyn, Staten Island, Queens, and the Bronx. And do you know how many women live in the city? Do you want us to check on them all tonight? Why, you must know that that would be impossible. 
How would we be supposed to do that? And how do you know they were even talking about New York at all? How do you know it wasn't a call from somewhere else you overheard? The call could have been from anywhere in the world. Look, lady, why don't you look at it this way? Do you really care if some Mexican or Japanese woman lives or dies? Well, I... See? Of course you don't. And rightfully so. I don't either. And as long as I don't have clear, foolproof evidence that we are talking about a woman here in New York City, well, I don't see a reason for us here at the police to get involved. Don't you agree? I... I guess... No. No, I must really insist. Now. Suppose you'd got your husband with you the way you always do. Would this um, <laughs> murder, as you call it, have made any difference to you then? Yes, he, he is always with me. Keeps me calm. I guess if he were here, I... A lot of murders are committed in this city every day, ma'am. But what are we supposed to do about that? But you are the police. The police can't possibly prevent all of them. We simply don't have the time, so the way I see it, there really is no reason worrying too much about some talk of murder floating around somewhere on the internet. Of course, I mean, if we could do something to stop them, we would really believe me. But a clue of this kind that's so vague is much more used to us than no clue at all, so... As it stands, there isn't anything we here at the police could do for you. Unless, well, there would be one thing. Yes? Well, we might be able to do more for you, Mrs. Stevenson, if you have some reason for thinking this call is phony and that someone may be planning to murder you. Me? No, I, I hardly think so. I, I mean, why should anybody? I'm alone all day and night. I see nobody, except my maid Louise. And she's so dull and incredibly lazy. Too lazy even to bring in my breakfast tray. But she couldn't possibly plan on harming me. And the only other person is my husband, Albert. And he's crazy about me. Adores me. He scarcely left my sight that I took sick 12 years ago. Well, if you can't think of anyone in your life who would want to harm you, I mean, if there is absolutely no one who could have grudge against you or who felt wronged by you in any way, then there is nothing for you to worry about, is there? You are probably right. But I still think that we ought to do something to try to stop these killers, and... Of course, of course. If you'll just leave the rest of this to us. But what will you do? It's so late already. It's nearly 11 o'clock. Mm, we'll take care of it, lady. Will you broadcast it all over the city and sound out squads and warn your radio cars to watch out, especially in good neighborhoods like mine? Lady, I said... We take care of it. Just now I've got a couple of other matters here on my desk that require my more immediate attention. So if you'll excuse me. Oh, you ignorant. Yes, right here with me. Idiot. Why does everyone think I'm a fool? I'm capable and I'm doing my best and Oh, no. Yeah, just wait a second, just... Is everything going according to plan so far? Yes, yes, everything's going great. She didn't. What is this? Who are you? You made sure the phone's still down? I don't want her to call the... Yes, yes, my guy assures me that. You should have heard her. You wouldn't believe it, the same old arrogance. Hold you, you know what she did to me what she did to you, and, and no one will listen to us. That's why we have to- Just answer, just answer. I don't understand any of this, please. Is everyone ready for the big finale? We just need to keep her a little while longer. Everything's fine on our end. 
My man is... Yeah, I'm outside, just waiting for... Who are you? I'm the operator. We talked half an hour ago, do you remember? What is your call, please? Operator? What? I didn't even call you! I... Well, maybe I just forgot. I'm completely besides myself. Operator, will you please, please try to reach Murray Hill 4 again? I really need to reach my husband. Of course, madam. Contacting Murray Hill 4. Oh, what a shame. Uh, seems to be busy. Uh, shall I? I can hear it. You don't have to tell me. I know it's busy. God, if this keeps going on much longer... If I could get a breath of fresh air or just lean out of the window and see the street. Oh, but what if I see someone standing outside the window? What would I do then? But maybe I should have a look, just to be sure. Madam, madam, it looks as if someone has left a voice message for you at the Murray Hill 4 number. Do you wish to receive it? Yes, of course. Playing the message. Darling, it's Albert, Dad. Terribly sorry. Tried to get you all night, but all the lines seem to be down. I, I hope this works. Uh, I'm leaving for Boston 11 p.m. tonight on urgent business. I'm back tomorrow afternoon. Just stay right where you are. I know you'll do fine without me for the night, so uh, keep happy. Do you wish to have that message forwarded to your system? No, no, thank you. Operator, try reaching that Murray Hill 4 system for me just once more, please. Contacting Murray Hill 4? They do not answer. He's gone. I can't be alone tonight. I can't. If I'm alone one more second, well, I guess. Oh, damn it! I don't really care what he says anymore, or what the expense is. I, I have to. I'm entitled. Operator, could you contact Henshley Hospital for me? Do you have an address or the video call number, madam? I'm afraid the phone lines are still down, sadly. No. But I know it's somewhere in the 70s. It's a very small, very private, and very exclusive hospital. Henshley. H-E-N-C- One moment, please. Hello? Henshley Hospital, how can I help you tonight? Nurses Registry. Excuse me? Who was it you wish to speak to, please? I want the nurse's registry at once. I want to hire a trained nurse immediately for the night. I see. Um, and what would be the, the nature of your case, madame? This is good. Nerves. I'm very nervous. Can't you see that? I need soothing, companionship. My husband is away. Well, uh, madame, uh, as you will surely understand, nurses are very scarce just now uh, because of the... Uh, you know, the, the, the ongoing global pandemic. <laughs> Our superintendent has asked us to send people out only on cases where the physician in charge feels it is absolutely necessary. Bon, je te rappelle, d'accord? Well, hey, just for once, stop talking on your phone. It is absolutely necessary. I'm a sick woman. I, I'm very upset, very. And I'm all alone in this big house. And tonight I overheard a conversation that, that upset me terribly about a murder. I'm afraid I'll go out of my mind. I see. I am very, very sorry to hear that, madame, but I really do not have the authority to just send you someone. I'll, I'll speak to the doctor as soon as she comes in at midnight. Midnight? But it isn't even 11 yet. Oh, my, my clock must have stopped. I thought it was running down. Peux le dégager, s'il te plaît? Ahem, what time is it? 
Uh, 10.45, madame. What is that? What is what, madame? I think I heard steps. They must have been at your end. There's no one here. Oh, I did not hear anything, madame. Now, about this uh, nervous thing. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but I am getting another call. I won't need a nurse tonight. Thank you. Albert, you won't believe how happy I am to see you. I have had a terrible night. You can't even imagine the horrors I've been through. The stress. Really? I'm so sorry to hear that, darling. Listen. And none of it would have happened if people weren't so incompetent. If this evening has proven one thing, it's that people who work in the service industries are good for nothings. One of them, well, I could swear one of them even looked like that woman. You remember, Albert, that woman from a few months ago, from the takeout service? Every time she delivered the food, it wasn't quite warm enough. Because, of course, she must have been delling around on her way over here. Luckily, I came to her employer about her, and that thinks I fired her. Which is good, because really, no one should have to be tormented by this kind of terrible service. Nervous, sick people like me. I already suffer so. No, anyways, Albert, do you believe the operators and even the police simply refuse to help me? Even though I witnessed the most terrible things. You see, there were these two men and they were planning. Darling, darling, will you please be quiet and listen for just a minute, please? It's important. Albert, what is going on? Why are you so terribly agitated? I'm so sorry, darling. I'm afraid I've made a terrible mistake. I just, I don't know what got into me. And, and listen, I need you to get out of the apartment as quickly as possible. Wear your black coat and a hat so he doesn't recognize you, but hurry. You have to go now before he... What, what are you talking about, Albert? Why, you, you sound almost as cryptic as the man I overheard. What do you mean, get out? You know I can't leave the house. My condition... Why, why can't you just do what you're told and get out? It's dangerous for you to stay in the apartment. For once? I always do as you tell me. Not once. Not once in all our years of marriage. I always do as I am told. I, I always do. When you told me four years ago that the doctor said I couldn't leave the house anymore because of my condition, when you said that, did I ever complain? Did I? No. No, I just stayed here, did as I was told. I'm a good person. I'm... I've been having an affair. Excuse me? I've been having an affair for the last four years now. I knew you would listen to me if I told you that you couldn't leave the house. You've always been so obedient. I wanted you to stay in the house so you wouldn't inconvenience me. I... <laughs> you were joking, right? <laughs> right, Albert. <laughs> this is one of your jokes, right? <laughs> but... You love me. You love me. You always say how you adore me and how I am everything to you. I don't understand. Can we talk about this later? You need to get out now, quickly. Please, darling. Does this have something to do with those calls? Albert, what have... Oh, God. It just all happened so fast. There was this woman. She said that she used to deliver takeout to you and then you got her fired. And she wasn't the only one. There were two more. Shut up, shut up, just shut up. You are a liar. You are cheating. I trusted you. Why? 
Then they were all so angry and they all had this plan. They knew about the affair and I, God, I don't know what I thought. So we hired this agency. Please, darling, just leave. It isn't safe in the apartment. Just go, they'll be there any minute. Oh God, there is someone here. God, help it. I think there's someone in this house. Someone downstairs in the kitchen. What should I do? They're... I'll be quiet. And then they'll think... I'm in desperate trouble. Oh, please. Do something to help them. I'll apologize. I'll do anything. Just, just please. I don't want to die, Albert. Darling. Um... Uh, no! 